Hello fellow YouTubers and Bassaholics. I'm Gene Delasala, President of Audioholics, and today we're here with... Hugo Rivera, Vice President of Marketing. How are you today, Gene? Doing great, my friend, as always. Awesome. I want to talk today about this topic, bass management. What Ooh. is it? It is a very important topic that's really discussed, my friend. Yeah, I think uh, it's time to discuss it because we get a lot of questions on it. Sure. You know, I think what we should do is a very basic overview of base management and how it applies to AV receivers and processors. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see how this video goes and how the response is, and we could get into more advanced sessions later. Yeah. Absolutely. So basically, what base management is, is, is it's, a, it's a way of routing the base from the movies or the music to speakers that are either large or speakers or your dedicated powered subwoofer. Now, in most cases, you know, people tend to set these wrong or they just leave it alone. They've got all the speakers set large or they don't have a subwoofer engaged and it's just a mess. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to do is, first of all, I would like to define a large versus a small speaker. And it doesn't necessarily have to do with the size of the speaker and it doesn't have to do with the specs because a lot of times you'll see these speakers and they claim they play down to 30 hertz or 20 hertz and they're a little speaker like this. Now obviously this speaker doesn't do that, nor do they claim it, but I'm just using it as an example. The reality is even a tweeter will play down the 20 hertz. <laughs> okay, but it can't do it at a frequency you can hear. Mm -hmm. And they never qualify, manufacturers never qualify at what output level that their speakers can produce that bass. Mm -hmm. So in most cases, most speakers really are not meant to be set for large. Right. Even your towers, even if you have a tower with three six inch woofers and a mid range and a tweeter, you're in most cases you're better off setting these speakers small, all your speakers small, and using bass management by doing that and then setting the crossover on it for 80 hertz to go to a powered subwoofer or better yet, two powered subwoofers. Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, your subwoofer is meant to produce bass. It's more right. efficient at producing bass. Mm -hmm. By using the bass management now, you're taking the strain of the bass off your little speakers. They don't have to produce this bass exactly. anymore that they really don't want to do anyways. Exactly. You're saving amplifier headroom mm -hmm. because now your receiver, which has a common power supply for five or seven channels, now it doesn't have to produce that much bass because the bass is what robs the power in the amplifier. Right. Right. Okay. So, and 80 hertz, I have to give credit to THX. They're the ones that initially said 80 hertz is the right crossover frequency. And I have to tell you, 95% of the times, 80 hertz is the right setting. Awesome. Okay. Now, there are these receivers out there, like the Denons and the Yamahas and, and Pioneer. They have multi crossover settings where you could change the crossover point per speaker, ch per speaker group and even the LFE channel. And I say use that in caution. Because what I've found in my years of testing is some of these receivers don't do the recombination of the bass correctly. So if you set one crossover, let's say you set your mains for 40 hertz and you set your surrounds for 90 hertz, I've found that sometimes when they do the reintegration into the subwoofer, the filter responses get all messed up. Understood. There's only a few companies that I've bench tested, like the Yamahas and the Denons, that actually understand how to use a triple crossover correctly. Right. A lot of the older generation Sirius Logic based management chipsets were a complete disaster. And I've written about this in articles. I said, don't mess with it. Just leave it at the same fixed setting. If you want to get experimental, I would recommend not changing channel groups more than 20 hertz. And ask yourself, why do you really want to do that to begin with? Right, right. You know, why do you want to complicate something that you, if you don't have the measurement tools to see what's going on, you can cause more harm than you're doing solving a problem. For sure. That's absolutely right. And, you know, the other thing, too, is sometimes like on the Denons, uh, they give you an LFE setting. And I would tell you to set that to 120 hertz, the max setting, because the LFE channel can go up to 120 hertz. So I would leave that at 120 and leave all your other settings at 80 hertz and all your speakers on small. And that's a starting point. OK. Use that as a starting point, get the bass levels right, use your room correction to get the EQ right. Well, EQ is, is it, it a mixed depends. I, yeah. meant, I meant to say get your levels and your channel delays mm -hmm. correct, okay? EQ is a hit or miss, and we've talked about this before in our yeah, room. Yeah, I'll pieces. link the video here so that people can yeah. take a look at it. But start off assuming all your speakers are small, see how you can get the bass integration then, and then after you got all that tidied up, if you want to set the main speakers to large and compare the sound, you can do that. Just be careful because sometimes what you get is double bass where you're getting a lap uh, crossover of the same common frequencies from 80 hertz and below played in the subwoofer as you are the main channels. Mm. Now, in big rooms, that could be beneficial. Yeah. 
you could, that extra boost might actually help, but in most cases it doesn't. It gives you too much excessive base energy, and if you don't EQ it out, it could be very boomy. I understand that. Now, some people like boomy, though, but us yeah. personally who like, you know, the, the fidelity of the system, then for us, obviously, that's a negative. You want to be able to delineate the bass and not just mm -hmm. hear a one-note wonder kind exactly. of uh, Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, awesome. I would really recommend when you get your new receiver set up, don't ignore the bass management because that is the, one of the most important things you have to set when getting your system set up. And you got to set it correctly. Wonderful advice. You heard it here first, guys. So, awesome, Gene. Anything else you'd like to add? I think that's good for now. I think, you know, depending on the response below, if you guys comment, we could get much more in detail on this. And we've got very detailed articles on Audioholics. And uh, we could talk about when to really use the large setting and if you have the right tools to analyze to make sure that the large setting is right for you. Awesome. Well, on that note, guys, you know, just uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. And also, like I, he said, let us know what you think on the comments below. And if you like this video, please click thumbs up and share it with your friends. Until next time, keep, keep listening. listening.